Grab your Bibles. We are back to the series that we've been talking about we, as it relates to the Elijah generation. I just believe that God has a word for us this morning that I want to share with you, hopefully to encourage someone who may be down and just to encourage them to be what God would have them to be. So grab your Bibles and go with me to 1 King chapter 17. Um, and then, uh, of course, if you are watching from the network, you can download our study guide for this series to joining with us in the study throughout the week. But I want to read one verse, and then we're going to talk about verses uh, 17 through verse 24 this morning. Three simple truths that I want to share with you so you can be encouraged and know this morning that God cares about you. So wherever you find yourself, I mean, if it's pointing to yourself, if you're watching by yourself or with your family members, let them know this morning that if you're part of this Elijah generation, or if you're in the world, or wherever you find yourself, maybe you're not even church, and you just happen to be surfing and you bumped into this um, program, we want you to turn to your neighbor and God cares about you. Now, look, look with me at verse 24. Let me read one verse, and prayerfully this is going to make sense as we talk through the series. And the woman said to Elijah, Now I know that you are a man of God, and that the word of the Lord is in your mouth is truth. One more time. And the woman said to Elijah, Now I know that you are a man of God, and the word of God in your mouth is truth. Let's pray, and then we're going to talk to this text this morning. Holy Spirit, as I stand to say, Thus saith the Lord, May I rest in you, God, and I am praying that as your word goes forth that I would speak prophetically only what you would have me to say. We don't want to say what Felix thinks needs to be said, but I want to say what God wants said. So open our hearts to hear, open our minds to be in tune, and God, we want to preach with clarity and soundness of mind to help people, God, so we can go forth in the midst of this pandemic. I find it so amazing that even in the midst of worship, you have a way of aligning the worship with your word, and you're aligning everything that is said from the call to worship to the word this morning that you get the glory. So speak. Help us heal as a people. Help us heal as a nation. Help us heal as a just a global body of believers, God, even unbelievers, God. Help them to know who you are. So open our hearts to receive. It is in your name we pray and thank you. Amen and amen. Now, I want you to keep your finger in this passage in front of us, um, 1 Kings chapter 17, and I'm going to do something a little different. I want to uh, keep your finger there and jump over with me to the book of John chapter 9, verses 1 through 7. I want to read that just as um, a scene-setting introduction, if I may use that, to lay some foundation for what we're going to be talking about this morning. And if you can grab your Bibles and if you can jump over to John chapter 9, um, just the first seven verses, I want to say something in these verses that I think applies directly to what's going on in 1 Kings chapter 17. And I'm going to say to you, um, if you have not been a part of the series, make sure you go on our YouTube channel and listen to, or the network and listen to the entire series so you can be brought up. This is kind of like a good survivor program, right? You can't just watch one. You got to watch it all to get caught up to where we are. So listen to what it says in John chapter 9. And as he passed by, this is Jesus, he saw a, mi a man blind from birth. And his disciple asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born by blind? And Jesus answered, it is not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. Don't miss that. But that the works of God might be displayed in him. And here's what he says in verse 4. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. For when um, night comes, uh, when a night is coming, no man can work. And then he says this, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said these things, notice the action that Jesus did. He spat on the ground and he made mud with the saliva. Then he anointed the man's eyes with the mud and said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam which means sent. So he went and he washed and he came back seeing. Back up to verse 1 and 2. He passed by. He saw a man that was blind from birth. And his disciples said to him, who sinned? And Jesus said, 
neither this man nor his parent, but that the works of God may be displayed in him. Here's a challenge this morning. I, I am one of those guys that theologically believes that as I read this text, that whenever God is doing something in the earth realm or whenever something happens and God is involved, his objective, his goal is that be it a miracle, be it a healing, be it a deliverance scenario, whatever it is, God wants to get the glory out of what is about to happen. And I say, think the same is true as we look at this text, if you were to jump back to chapter 17 of the book of, Fir of First Kings. Here's what my position is as it relates to this coronavirus pandemic that we find ourselves in it. I'm one of those guys that will say to you, God wants the glory out of it as difficult as this storm and situation may seem that we're facing. I am a firm believer that the church of God has great opportunities in this crisis to demonstrate is who God is so that people will begin the process of choosing him as their Lord and Savior and stop serving all the little gods in the earth. So when I look at what's going on with corona today, I'm the guy that's going to say to you, God is doing something in the world. Now, I cannot honestly say that I know what it is God is doing, but I will say this. The church of God has an obligation in the midst of where we find ourselves to bring God glory through it all. And we have to figure out because this season, I'm telling you, it presents a lot of opportunities for the gospel to reach more people than ever before. Because here's what we see. The church doors are closed, but it's as if God opens the, opened the church door in a broader sense on the internet and on YouTube and on Facebook. And when I look at that, I see more preachers spreading the gospel. I see more people praying. I see more things happening than it have ever happened before. God is doing something. The question that comes down is what is he doing and what does it look like that he's doing so he can get the glory out of this. So I believe this passage this morning, it gives us an example of what ministry can look like in the midst of this pandemic that the world finds itself in. This passage, it provides us with an example of how the Elijah generation or the church that chooses to be part of the Elijah generation can go places and impact people that it normally did not have opportunity to impact. And the reasons these opportunities present themselves is because God wants the world. I want you, I'm going to say this over and over again. He wants the world. He wants people in the world to make the transition from serving all these small gods that we serve to serving him who is the great and mighty God. I call him Yahweh Elohim. He is the great God. Come on, say amen wherever you find yourself. He wants the glory out of that. So today's passage centers around this woman of Zarephath. This is the same lady that we've been studying or the same widow that we've studied for the past two weeks prior to the Easter break. This is the same woman that God instructed Elijah would provide food for him because the brook Sherith had dried up, right? So, so this is the same woman who because she obeyed God and provided for his prophet, God reciprocated blessings and God showed her great benevolence by causing, listen to this, her jar of flour never to be spent nor her jug of oil to ever run empty throughout the entire duration that the, dr the drought was on the face of the earth. This means as long as there was no rain, if you've been following us along, she was provided for by way of resources. Now, I don't want you to get comfortable in that because we're going to flesh this out a little bit because as Elijah now, if I get into the text, as Elijah spent time with this woman at her home enjoying hot water cornbread, 
cornbread. Amen. Yeah. In other words, in other words, he had this hot water cornbread that was made out of oil and flour. In the Caribbean and the islands, we call them Johnny Cakes. Amen. As, as he was enjoying that, no doubt getting acquainted with the family. And while he was carrying out his mission, evangelizing Phoenicia, this woman, she had the, uh, the privilege of experiencing a constant miracle in her home. Imagine this. Every time she went to the cupboard to get some flour, to make some hot water cornbread, right? Or, or Johnny Cakes, depending on where you're from. I want you to visualize this. She would go in the cupboard and, and she would open that jar of flour and she would dip her spoon in there and take some flour out, enough to make some cakes for the day. And, and if I'm that woman, you got to see this. The promise was the flour would not be spent and the oil would not be run dry. So she would take some out and pour it on the counter and then she'd sit back and watch that jar. And then, miraculously, she would just see flour do this. It'd fill up all over again. And she'd be like, dang. And then she would open up her oil, and she'd pour oil out to make the flour, and she'd sit the jar back down. And before anything, she'd watch the oil. And then it'd be like, Dang. And it was like the flour was never running out and the oil was never being spent. And if you're like her, you're going, I mean, she had never experienced God like that before. So I can see her going to Elijah saying, Elijah, what kind of God is that that replaces flour? What kind of God is that that, that, that replaces oil? And she was probably enjoying the blessing of God in the moment. But then in the midst of the blessing, in the midst of her enjoying the blessing, her world turns upside down. Her son gets infected with some illness or some disease that resulted in her death. If she were alive today, here's what we would have said, he got the virus. And we would say her son got infected with coronavirus, and he ended up dying as a consequence. I mean, you got to see this. I find this to be amazing because it seems like everything's going well, and then all of a sudden, in the midst of the storm, he gets infected and he dies. Now, isn't that where we find ourselves today? Yesterday, everything seemed to be going. It seems as if it was just yesterday. We were enjoying the blessing of what God was doing. Everybody was coming to church. Church houses were filled. People were going to work. They were getting paid. And then all of a sudden, it comes across the news. There's a pandemic hitting the world. And in the midst of the blessing, in the midst of when everything looked like it was going well, people who had jobs, all of a sudden the job has gone away. Musicians that were making money and entertainers and, 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 and practitioners and physicians and people who had work to go to, all of a sudden they wake up one morning and the world is turned upside down. Lord Jesus, what do we do? Here is an application that I think that God wants us to take away because here's if you were to look at the passage in James, if you were to, to refer over to the body of our Lord in James chapter 4, right? I want to look at this scripture. Here is what James says in 4. He says, come now, you who say today or tomorrow we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit. Listen to what he says in the next verse. Yet you do not know what tomorrow brings. What is your life for you are but a mist that appears for a time and then it vanishes. Instead, we ought to say, listen to this, if the Lord's will, we will live and we will do this and do that. Here's what has happened in the world. We have forgotten that God is in control. We have forgotten that God is in charge and we go about living our life as if tomorrow was promised to us. My wife uses this word, God has hit the reset button. And, and, and this is what this lady, where she found herself, she found herself in a predicament where she was scared as her only means of provision was all of a sudden take away. Her business went flat and her money was taken away. Her sins was gone. One day things were fine. And the next moment she found herself upside down. 
And so here's what that caused in her life. And if you listen to me carefully this morning, here's what it does to you and here's what it does to me when we find ourselves in this pandemic. It, it causes us to develop a sense of fear. And look at the first point I want to share with you this morning. Very, very important that you not miss this as we walk through the test. Because it causes fear, fear now, it then causes us to develop a faulty perception of God's care for the world. I want you to hear that. I want us to walk through this. I want you to get this because it causes us to develop a faulty perception of God's care for the word. L let me read this. Let me read this. Look with me. Look with me at verse 17, right? It says here in chapter 17, verse 17, And the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, became ill. And his illness was so severe that there was no breath left in him. And she said to Elijah, What have you against me, O man of God? That you have come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to cause the death of my son. The best way I can illustrate this with what's going on in her life. Remember, she was just watching the flower and just watching the oil and she was enjoying Elijah. Then all of a sudden her son dies and she starts freaking out. She starts panicking. She developed fear. Y'all remember the days. You had to have been in church to know this. If, you, if you're new believers, this illustration won't make sense. I remember the days when, when I was a young man out in the world just acting like Bucky and the Fool. Amen. And then, and then it'd be revival service. Y'all remember this? And then the pastor would invite the prophet to come run revival, right? And, and, and back in the day, you had to go to church. So you'd come to church, y'all, and, and you knew you wasn't right. Amen. Come on. You knew you wasn't right. You'd come to church, and then the prophet would get to prophesy, right? And here's what would happen. He'd be calling folk out and saying the Lord says, and, he, and, and then you know that, that the time might come where he might call your name. Y'all remember that? And, and you be sitting in your pew, sliding down, Lord Jesus, don't let him see me, Lord. Don't let him see me, Lord, because I wasn't right last night. Don't you? Come on. And, and the reason that is, is you had an understanding or a framework that God could use that prophet to tell you, I wish I had somebody in here. And, and you'd come, y'all remember those days? You'd come to church scared. Well, in the Old Testament, it was no different. This lady now assumes that her child is dead because God is punishing her for some sin, though we don't know what the sin is, and she believes that Elisha be in her, in her house, that because he was there, God revealed her sin to Elijah, and now God seems to be punishing her by taking her son away for something he had done. So she finds herself afraid. Now, church, I got to say this real quick because I want y'all to understand this. That the God that I serve, let me say this. I want you to get a proper perspective of God. He is not focused on punishing us for our sins. His goal is to love and forgive us for our sins. And then to deliver us from the consequence. I don't serve a God who goes around killing people because they did something wrong. I serve a God that's a loving God. I want y'all to get this. I, I, the God that I serve is a God that cares more about me. And I'm going to say this in a little while, that he gave himself. Look at what the scripture says in 1 John 1 and 8, right? I want y'all to walk with it. Here's what he says. He says, if we say we have no sin. We deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. So here's what that means. Here's what that means. If God was about killing people because they sin, every last one of us up in here would have been dead. Come on, y'all. Yeah, yeah. But here's what verse 9 says, right? If we confess our sins, lock into this. He's what? Faithful and just to do what? To forgive and then to do what? Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then I love verse 10 for the righteous people. He say, if you have no sin, say you have no sin, we do what? We make him to be a liar and the truth is what? Not in us. So look at Romans now. Look at what Romans says in Romans 5 and 8, right? But God shows, God does what? He demonstrated his love toward us. Why? In that while we were yet, what? So, so here's what that means. While I was still shucking and jiving, come on. While I was still messing up. While I was still doing what I do. He sent his son to die for us. And I love John 3.16. Y'all know this one. Here's what John 3.16 says. For God so loved the world. That he did what? He gave his only son. 
that whoever believes in him should not what? Perish, but have what? Everlasting life. And I love verse 17 because here's what 17 says. He didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. I need to take a, wo- a moment here because this woman thought that the prophet had showed up and killing her son was her suffering the consequences for our sin. Lock into this. Here's what God did when I sinned. He didn't kill me. He killed himself. You got to get that because I could not go on the cross and pay the price of my own sin. So he paid the price. He loved me so much that he sent his son to die in my place. I love that because Bible says this, greater love had no man than this, that a man would lay down his life for what? His friend. But here's what happens. Here's what happened. When fear steps in, when panic steps in, When the pandemic hits, here's what we start doing. Just like this lady, we start blaming God for all the things that we don't understand. And I want you all to hear me say this this morning, that God is a loving God. God is a caring God. Don't ever make the mistake in the midst of this pandemic, whether you've lost your job, whether you've lost a loved one, whether you've lost income, whatever it is, that God doesn't love me, do not make that mistake. He still, he still, and y'all, that's good news. He still loves you. Look with me, look with me at the next thing. Look at the second point I want y'all to take as we kind of walk through this text, okay? The second thing is this, and, and here it is. God wants the church, he wants to use his church to show his care to a hurting world. So so church, here is where that that passage I read in John comes in. He wants to use you, the believer. He wants to use me now to show the women of Zarephath, the people who don't know him, that he cares. Look at what it says here. Look at what it says here, right? And so Elijah now, he took, he he said to her, give me your son. And he took him from her arms and carried her up into the upper chamber, chamber, where he lodged and he laid him on his own bed. And watch this. He cried out to the Lord, Oh my God, have you brought calamity even upon this widow whom I sojourn? Look at verse 18. Look at verse 18. And he said to the woman, Give me your son. And he took her in his arm. This is very, very important. This is very, very important. This is very, very important. This woman said to Elijah, Elijah, my son died because I sinned and God is punishing me. And, 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 and here it is. Elijah could have developed a strong apologetic based on his theology of divine judgment. He could have said, yeah, you're right. Had you not been sinning, God would not have killed your son. He did not do that. Here is what Elijah did. He didn't spend time trying to discuss theologically with the woman why her son died. Here is what he did. He took the son didn't say a single word to the woman. Hear me. But he showed her the love of God. Now, preacher, why are you spending some time on this? Because if there is one lesson the church can learn today in the midst of this pandemic, as we're going through this, and I need y'all to put that slide on the scene. Here's this. is the truth that our actions speak louder than our words. I want y'all to hear me say this. Our action speak louder than our... Elijah did not say much to the lady, but he showed her that God cared. He showed her love. Here is where the church of yesterday has made its mistake before. We have been critical on people who sin. So here's what we do. Man, you a drug addict. God going to send you to hell if you don't stop doing drugs. And we spend so much time condemning them that they never see the love of God in our heart. People are going to the abortion clinics, and here's what the church of yesterday did. We spend time picketing the abortion clinic, and we forget about the young women that are hurt that needs the love of God. We need to show them the love of God more than we condemn them for what they did. And we wonder why the church can't reach nobody. We see the young man busting a sag and they're identifying with this gang. And we spend more time criticizing them, talking about them, telling the wrong thing we did. What we need to do is be like Elijah and said, give me the child. And show them the love of God. 
I'm telling you, Scripture still says, love covers a multitude of sin. Here is my theology. Don't tell me how much God loves me. Show me the love of God. Don't tell me how much God cares about me. Show me how much he cares. Here is what good. The Bible says in John 3, 16, he so loved the world that he left his home in glory to show me. And church, if you're going to be part of the Elijah generation, the world is scared. People are afraid. People are freaking out. They don't want to hear your theology on the pandemic. They want to know that God cares. They want to know that God loves them. And here's, 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 sorry. God wants to get the glory out of this. And the best way he can get the glory is for us to show him that he cared. Let me say this last thing real quick, then I'm going to stop. Go to the third point. I want you, so here's the third thing. So God shows us his love, right? Here's why he does it. Here's why he And it's cured to hurt the world so that the world may know him. So that the world may come to know him. Let me read this. And I know, I know we're running tight on time, but let me just read this and then we're going to talk. So, so Elijah goes through what he goes through, right? He takes the child. He takes the child upstairs. He lays on it. He, he, he prays. Look at what he says in verse 20. And, the, and let me back up. He says here, verse 21, and he stretched himself on the child three times and he cried to the Lord, oh Lord, my God, let this child's life come back to him again. And the Lord listened to the voice of Elijah. And the life of her child did what? Came into him again, and he revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down from the upper room into the house and delivered him to his mother. And Elijah said, see, here your son lives. And the woman said to Elijah, what? Now I know that you are a man of God and that the word of God is in your mouth. Listen to this, church, and I'm done. I don't have time to go into the depth of all of that. God had just... Went against Baal. Remember me with me. This whole series is about a battle with Baal and God. He had just said to Baal, I'm going to make it stop raining. And I dare you to make it rain again. Then he had just took all their resources away. Elijah was by the brook. Then he goes into Baal's own territory where a widow was starving. He puts his prophet there. And Baal was incapable of feeding his own people. And God causes a jar of flour not to run empty and a jar of oil not to run out. And he says, Baal, see, I can make food. You make food. And Baal couldn't do it. And watch the third thing that's happening here. The woman of Zarephath, her sons die. Understand with me, Baal is the god of fertility and he was incapable of raising the boy. And in Baal's own backyard, God says, Baal, watch me. And he uses Elijah to bring life back to that boy and to give him to his mother again. To show Baal that he is the sustainer. He is the keeper of life. Church, hear me and I'm done. My job, your job in the midst of this pandemic is to bring life back to the world again. Our job is to go to those widows. To go to the person who's lost their job who's thinking about giving up on life and give them life again. That person who don't know how they're going to make it, our call is to give them life again so that they can know that God cares about you. Here's the thing. Who sinned that this man should be born blind? Who sinned that we have this pandemic in the world? Who sinned that this virus is going around? Here's Jesus' answer. It doesn't matter how it got here. What matters is that I want to get the glory out of it. Elijah generation, our job is to bring God glory in the midst of the storm. Here's how I want to end. Wherever you find yourself, maybe it's fearful, Maybe like this woman, you're panicking, you don't know what to do. Hear me this morning. God cares. God loves you. God wants to have you provided. You kind of get what I'm saying? Because you may have have lost a loved one as a result of the pandemic, I want you to hear me say this. I am not saying in the scriptures, not saying that God killed them because they sinned. Don't make that mistake. There's consequences of sin in the world in general. God loves them. 
And he wanted to give them an opportunity to be saved. So don't make that mistake. God's goal is love. God's goal is care. So wherever you find yourself, hear me say this this morning. God cares about you. God loves you. God wants to bring you into a relationship with this. He wants to get the glory out of this. So wherever you find yourself, if you have not yet given your heart to God, I want to give you a chance to do that. So wherever you are, just bow your heads with me and just say, Dear Lord Jesus, I realize that I've sinned and I've failed you. So Holy Spirit, come into my life and save me. Forgive me for sinning. Forgive me for messing up. And God, bring me into a relationship with you. And God, I thank you for saving me. And listen to me this morning. If you've done that, God saved you. Find yourself a good church. You can become a member online at RCF. You can connect with us and say, this is the place I want to worship because we want to let you know God care for you. If you've prayed that prayer, he's in your heart. He wants to save you and he can bring you into a relationship with him. Allow God to move and have his way. I want to thank you so much for worshiping with us this morning. Amen? Thank God for who he is. Here, let me say this and then we're going to bid you goodbye. Takes ministry to do, I mean, take finances to do ministry. So if you've been watching us online or if you're a member of Restoration Christian Fellowship, you're offering your gifts, your tithes, your financial contribution matters. So if you're an RCF network, make sure you go and click on that give button. You can text to give. You can give online. You can send your gifts in by mail. It takes resources. We don't want you to stop giving because the pandemic is here. God is still in the blessing business. So bring your seed so that God can get the glory. I want to thank those that have been supporting the ministry financially. Thank you for your support. It's mean, meant all the difference in the world. And I'm going to say this and I'm going to leave you. If you, the word today was a blessing to you, join us Wednesday night. I'm going to say some things Wednesday about this message that I didn't have time to say this morning. Make sure you come with us. We're going to have a panel. We're going to talk about it. Text your questions in Wednesday at 7 o'clock. We'll be here again so God can move and have his way. Thank you so much for joining us. If you don't hear anything, if you didn't hear anything this morning, hear this. God cares about you. God cares about you. God bless you. Thank you so much for worshiping with us this morning. God bless you and have your way. Amen. Bless you. Bless you.